Canada boasts the longest coastline in the world, a fact that underscores the importance of superior underwater capabilities for the Royal Canadian Navy. Canada must ensure its security and sovereignty through advanced submarine technology as a nation with vast marine territory. The RCN currently operates four Victoria-class submarines, a fleet that has been in service since the early 2000s. These submarines were originally acquired from the Royal Navy and introduced into Canadian service between 2000 and 2003. The Victoria-class submarines are expected to remain operational until the mid to late 2030s, thanks to the Victoria-class modernization project. This initiative aims to enhance the existing fleet's capabilities, ensuring they can effectively meet current and future maritime threats. However, with the Royal Canadian Navy planning to deactivate these submarines around the mid-2030s, a new class of submarines is becoming increasingly urgent. Canada has announced plans to build 12 new super submarines to address this pressing need to replace the aging Victoria-class fleet. The timeline for these new boats is crucial, with the RCN requiring the first of these submarines to be delivered by the mid-2030s. This strategic approach will ensure a seamless transition from the current submarines to the new fleet, thereby avoiding any gaps in operational capability that could compromise national security. Canada must make a multifaceted decision regarding the supplier of its new submarines, which includes evaluating technical capabilities, costs, and the geopolitical implications of its choice. Several well-known defense companies could potentially supply Canada's new submarines. These include Sweden's Saab, France's Naval Group, Germany's ThyssenKrupp Marine Systems, Spain's Navantia, and South Korea's Hanwha Ocean. Each company brings its own unique strengths and capabilities to the table, making the selection process a complex yet crucial task. Understanding the specific offerings of each contender is imperative for Canada to make an informed choice that aligns with its defense strategy. Will Canada acquire nuclear submarines? Canada's potential to acquire nuclear submarines remains a matter of debate. On one side, proponents argue that nuclear submarines provide significant strategic advantages. With their ability to operate for extended periods without surfacing, these submarines offer long-range capabilities that are particularly valuable for Canada's unique geography. This is crucial for conducting operations in the Arctic, where traditional naval forces may face limitations due to environmental conditions and logistical challenges. Conversely, there are strong arguments against pursuing a nuclear submarine fleet. Critics cite the enormous costs associated with developing, constructing, and maintaining such advanced vessels. Nuclear submarines come with hefty price tags for the initial investment and ongoing maintenance and training of specialized personnel. This raises concerns about whether these expenses can be justified, especially when advanced conventional submarines are available and, and can adequately fulfill Canada's maritime defense needs. Ultimately, deciding whether Canada should invest in nuclear-powered submarines remains a balancing act between strategic imperatives and practical realities. As opinions sharply divide, it is clear that any future direction for Canada's submarine fleet must consider the capabilities and advantages of nuclear power and the associated challenges and risks. Saab's C-71 Expeditionary Submarine stands out as a remarkable option. This Swedish submarine is specifically designed to tackle the challenges of Arctic operations, blending operational flexibility with advanced technology. Its capabilities include stealthy underwater navigation and the ability to operate in harsh conditions, essential for Canada's northern defense strategies. France and Spain may offer more adaptable models in size and operational scope, catering to diverse mission profiles. Their conventional submarines can be tailored to meet specific operational requirements, providing Canada with versatile options.
Another attractive contender is the 212 CD class submarine, a joint development by Germany and Norway. This model combines German reliability and technological advancement with Norway's expertise in Arctic operations. Its innovative design and proven performance in challenging environments make it a compelling option for Canada, especially considering the importance of maritime security in the Arctic region. Additionally, the recently offered KSS-3 submarine from South Korea, developed by Hanwha Ocean, presents itself as a sophisticated choice equipped with a unique air-independent propulsion system and multiple armaments, adding to Canada's strategic deterrent capabilities. The requirements for the new submarines are ambitious and reflect Canada's unique challenges. They must be exceptionally stealthy, possess deadly firepower, and provide long-lasting operational persistence. Importantly, they also need to be capable of operating in the demanding Arctic environment, which necessitates extended range and durability. This combination of capabilities will empower Canada to effectively detect, track, block, and, when necessary, confront threats across the vast expanses of its three oceans, thereby safeguarding its national interests for generations to come. So as Canada evaluates its options for new submarines, the decision goes beyond mere technical specifications and costs. It encompasses the geopolitical implications of the choice in the long-term defense strategies that Canada must pursue.